studio I have a lot of things going at the same time so um, I, I work across drawing and painting and uh, sculpture installation uh, video so er everything it kind of happens simultaneously and it's quite a, a kind of chaotic process but I enjoy that uh, those multiplicities and I enjoy those uh, contradictions with, between the works and so on and they they feed off one another um, so I can quite often be making a video and having it rendering in the corner while then I'm working uh, in another part of the studio or I actually have several studios within, at home in Denmark so then I move between these different spaces and leave the works uh, and because I've got quite a lot of space uh, in summer especially even though it's very cold in the winter in summer especially I can leave works um, in different studios for many many months and come back to them uh, after you know not working on them for quite a while um, so that that also works with my uh, practice in relation to how I approach exhibitions as well. I tend to keep work separate in different spaces depending on the different bodies of work, but uh, they also, uh, the ideas influence one another. I, I research things very in a great deal of detail, but I also uh, always leave things open to intuition and to learned experience and to play and all of these different things so it's it's not about uh, uh, it's not about a sort of a model where the concept dictates the medium and that the um, artwork has to be thought out beforehand it's it's working through process and making juxtapositions between different uh, uh, historical starting points or, or um, different uh, the kind of unusualness of everyday being, just like little little moments that strike me, that then suddenly turn into something quite sig significant. Um, so, I, and I use the, the spaces I work in, the, the, the gallery spaces I work in, as a, as a studio as well. So the the process doesn't stop in the studio. I mean, it's it can happen on a bus, it can happen on a plane. In fact, most of my thinking happens when I'm daydreaming. Most of my creative processes and ideas come when I'm looking out a window and not thinking about anything. Or it might actually come when I'm reading a book and I lose my train of thought and then I come back to one sentence that comes out of the book uh, and maybe even becomes dislocated from its original meaning. But then it strikes me as a new creative, a new idea, a new thought. Um, and that's that's what I'm interested in. I'm actually very, um, very kind of relaxed about ideas and relaxed about creativity because it's my favorite part of, part of the thing. So that's why I don't separate um, this kind of art and this balance in art and life is just kind of automatic. They're, they're parts of the same thing. So the stuff that I do with my kids even though it's not artwork, is equally important as me going into the studio and I don't stop thinking and it's the same, the opposite way, I don't stop thinking about my wife and kids when I go into the studio, they're, they're there with me and it's just all part of the same thing, so uh, I'm not interested in to kind of be this recluse that separates myself away from from uh, society or away from relationships or social spaces and things. I do like quiet and alone time, and, but my favorite thing is just to be with my family. Uh, a big project I'm working on at the minute, which I didn't mention in, in my talk, is uh, to do with the, the home, the place where I live in, in, in Denmark. And it's an old, uh, uh, it was a former plant nursery. So uh, it's uh, 6,000 square meters of greenhouses. Uh, and they're all falling to pieces and trees are growing up and weeds are growing through and so on and I'm taking them apart and I'm documenting the whole process with um, video and photography mainly um, and also audio sound recordings and they end up turning into uh, photographic works mainly light boxes which are the light boxes are made from some of the lighting components in the actual greenhouses 
um, and it's very much about uh, examining a process of relationship between this architectural industrial space as it kind of returns to its former state of being a forest um, and it's more and more becoming the center of, of my artistic practice in terms of how I I uh, use this whole area, it's five acres of land, and my, my home is there, my house is there, where I live with my family. So it's very much part of my life, and I play with my children there, we build tree houses, we play football, and, but then I'm deconstructing parts of the greenhouses, I'm planting plants, but I'm documenting and photographing and analyzing and looking at how it changes the the, the plant life and also how it changes the you know, animal life and the insects and all these different things. Uh, also because the, the conditions in these uh, greenhouses are, it becomes extremely hot uh, and spring starts earlier uh, in them uh, and trees are kind of pla planting, self-planting and uh, following the lines of the architecture and then breaking up through the glass and so on. So um, at the moment, that that is kind of a real source for of inspiration for kind of a creative process. And um, uh, at the moment, I'm thinking uh, that I may re return to um, working from life through drawing, probably to start with. So drawing directly from uh, some of this source material uh, and docu document in, in other ways um, uh, using the fine materials and different things as well like the concrete and so on uh, but it's kind of an open-ended studio practice but in an expanded field so it, I'm treating it all as kind of a, a playground for, for creativity um, so it sort of sums up all of my interest in architecture the relationship to the natural world uh, humankind's existence on this planet and to all of these different things um, and uh, it's uh, kind of a space for creativity where I also have the possibility of not making art or not calling it art. Uh, and I'm interested in that as well because it's actually documenting uh, a process. So in a way, what might be the only thing left after 20, 30, 40 years might be just the forest. Uh, and I find that really interesting. Um, so I might, I might have created all this stuff, but in the end, what, what it kind of is left at the site is, is a forest and, and a house, uh, and no greenhouses. <laughs> I grew up in the in the countryside, so that definitely is an affinity. It's definitely part of my childhood and so on. But I also find um, I'm very interested in, in carbon, in the, the carbon molecule, but also the fact that carbon is in all thi in all things and uh, using charcoal uh, is, is you know dead tree so it's kind of a burnt tree it's a carbon in another form and uh, I find it uh, interesting in relation to also the ecological aspect of what is happening to the world um, you know it's been found out recently that uh, if we uh, take all of the the fossil fuels out of the ground. Uh, that there's too there too much will be released into the atmosphere, and there will be no going back in terms of an it'll be an ecological disaster for the, for the planet. So I'm kind of interested in it on that conceptual level, in terms of it representing both life and death, uh, order and chaos, and all these different paradoxes. Um, so sort of on a fundamental level that um, uh, the tree and the structure of the tree on a microscopic level uh, as well as, as a figurative uh, image is uh, an encyclopedic image is really fundamental to the way I look at things and I also find that um, the more I look into the tree and, and the and uh, wood and working with wood and so on in different components and its chopped up forms um, it really kind of gets me to the the essence of things so I'm trying to when the work becomes abstract with these small uh, 
blocks of tree, wood, or mo suggesting molecular structures. Uh, it's, it's an attempt uh, to, to draw out the essence of things. The word abstract com its etym etymology comes from, I think, probably Greek, and it's, uh, it means to draw out, to draw something out from the center of something, or to, to take it out. So I'm interested in this idea of, of an essence of something. So that's why when I make the wall drawings, the charcoal falls on the floor and it's also part of the installation, the pile of charcoal and the drawing on the wall. So the work almost doesn't exist in a way. It's just material on the wall and then it gets painted over afterwards. Uh, but it is fundamentally an object when it's in, the, in space. So I guess it's a, kind of about that absence and presence and a liminal space, a space between spaces uh, of being there but also being a ghost and suggesting that it's going to go away again and uh, mm -hmm. not, not come back again. So, so yes, there's lots of, lots of different levels that I engage with, um, with, uh, with trees and nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm.